This week, we talk about two of our favorite films for Halloween. The first one is serving up a tall glass of Miak to Clark in Ernest Scared Stupid. And the second film, I'm taking a trip to a creepy graveyard pumpkin patch in Pumpkinhead. Uh, so this week, Clark and I, uh, I made Clark watch Pumpkinhead and Ernest Scared Stupid. Uh, these are our October Halloween picks. Um, so yeah, get, get, get prepared. This is going to be pretty easy. Yeah, Miak is one of my favorite uh, things, and I'm really glad that they mentioned it in, uh, in one of these movies. It's uh, absolutely perfect. It goes with everything. Uh, you can put it on your toast. You can put it on, um, you know, you can put it on your jam if you want. You can put it on your mm-hmm. jelly if you want. Yeah. Um, but whatever you should, you know, just remember, don't do is put it on a troll. That's not going to help you. Um, <laughs> so the fr- <laughs> Miak. Uh, the first movie we're going to wa- or talk about is uh, Pumpkinhead from 1988. <clears throat> Rotten Tomato score of 68 percent, 86 minute runtime, and. Um, uh, one of my one of my favorite horror films just for around uh Halloween time. It's it's got everything you want in it. It's got a decent story, good acting, um and a pretty damn scary creature. Like I remember being frightened of this thing as a kid. It's uh It's a good movie in terms of like uh there there's some good actors in this movie. I I will I will give it that 100%. There's there's a good connection built at the very beginning of the movie especially with the actor or the, one of the main characters and his son. Uh, and it just, uh, it connects you to them. They, they did a decent job of building that up for the first 30 minutes of the film. I mean, one of my biggest complaints probably with this movie is that the buildup takes so damn long. Like, I get it. Um, there, is a, there is a lot of character building there and relationship building between you and the character. But holy cow, man, like 45 minutes into this movie... We still don't have anything um, to horror if it, to talk about. Um, but with that well, being the very, said, the very beginning they they show you the monster. Yes, that first 30, 30 seconds to a minute of you know seeing um, pumpkin head uh, is awesome. Um, probably the coolest. This is one of my favorite creatures. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. it, it's disgusting looking. It's scary. Um, I wouldn't want this thing creeping in my bedroom. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they did a good job with what they had back in the 1980s. It, it definitely, yeah, it definitely looks decent for a kind of an animatronic slash suit monster or a puppet slash suit monster. It, there are some scenes where you see the cutaways though, and it kind of pulled me away a little bit from immersion. Uh, so if you come in watching this movie expecting some r- really super realistic monster, just kind of hold back your uh, your naysaying and try to kind of experience it as the uh, the people being chased by Pumpkinhead, <laughs> yeah, or being Don't... murdered by Pumpkinhead or, or whatever how they're feeling, and it, it'll it, that suspension of disbelief will really help. Don't get too crazy too fast. Um, yeah, it's good, but it's not that good, right? It's the eighties. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's it's definitely worth watching if you like horror movies. I'll, I will say that 100%. So the whole origin of this story was um, it was actually a poem written by Ed Justin. I thought that was a fun note uh, because, oh, really? yeah, because uh, I don't know of too many movies that are turned from a, a poem. Um, you get a lot of like Hansel and Gretel style stories that become uh, films. But um, right. this is one of the first ones I can think of that is from a poem. We'll, we'll probably run into a lot more in the future, but that was pretty cool. Um, the only movie I can think of like that is the dark tower that that's based off of a poem as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that on our list? Cause if not, we definitely no. should probably add it. Is that a horror movie? Um, I think people classify it. We'll, we'll dig deeper into that and figure it out. Yeah. But, um, we're always gonna, we got to try to find a way to blend those lines as well. Um, find, things that you the listeners like to watch um because we really want to start engaging with you guys um even have you guest guest star on the the podcast with us um if you've got films that you want us to watch because you love them or you hate them or both um you know you definitely can send those to us um our email is two guys and some horror at gmail.com um and you can find us on social media twitter uh instagram at two guy horror pod um 
they wouldn't allow us to have our, our full name because it's just too damn long. So, um, you know, poor Twitter. They can't handle all the characters. Two Guy Horror Pod, or however you said it. Two Guy <laughs> Horror Pod. Um, and you'll find us. Pod. Yeah, you'll find us. Um, I like that, actually. That's That sounds good. It's not a bad name. <laughs> Welcome to the Horror Pod. Um, so Lance uh, Henriksen does a great job in this film. I think he carries um, most of this great. film with his acting. Uh, the kids in this movie aren't so great. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so you text me, and who who did we see in this movie that we know is in another film that we watched quite recently? Specifically Steve. Uh, in the first scene you see him, is one of the teenagers wearing a headband. He is the stoner in slumber party massacre 2 yes my favorite character from slumber party massacre 2 is here and he's here to actually do a much better job of acting in my opinion than he did in slumber party massacre 2 um i wouldn't say he's great or anything by that means but he's definitely a better character um in this movie yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't call the acting in this movie bad i'd call it just kind of par for what it is but it's uh anyhow like these do you do we, do we want to talk about how these kids they they're going on a dirt bike trip and they stop at this gas station yeah and something unfortunate happens yeah which so, causes go ahead so um yeah so th- like you were saying they're on their way um and if you notice um the way the characters are set up they're in two separate vehicles they're they're kind of following each other right up the the trail mm-hmm. and you've got one you know I'm going to call him a dickhead because that's what he is. But you got one character, Joel, who's a total jerk. And you can tell he's just a troublemaker. He's got a troubled past. He's got issues. And he's drinking while driving. (laughs) Like his girlfriend hands him a beer. And he's like, thanks, babe. Like that's that's how we open this movie. That's how you're kind of learning about these kids as they're driving on their way. And like you were saying, so they stop at the the gas station slash um, kind of like a market. This is this is yeah. where Lance Henriksen's character Ed Hardy. This is where him and his son live. It's like a uh, hillbilly market where there are people who are away from the rest of society. People who you would never expect to think. People wearing burlap sacks and just really dirty. Not really. There's not really a lot of electricity. It seems it's just kind of them up on the mountain. And, and uh, a terrible event happens. Right. Right. Um. um so we'll let you guys <clears throat> kind of discover that for yourselves. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to dig into that. I feel uh, with the, just in case of the uh, introduction of the characters, none of these kids are, are terrible people, except for Joel specifically. But Joel even at one point kind of redeems himself to a small degree. So I don't, this is completely different from a lot of the other movies we've watched so far where the majority of the characters you just don't like in this movie. It's kind of the opposite. You can kind of relate to each of them. Maybe not so much Joel, unless you're kind of like him. Yeah. I mean, there's, I would say there's a character for everyone in this movie. Um, someone that you can relate to and attach to. Um, so after this terrible issue or this, um, horrific accident happens, whatever you want to call it, um, you get more information into Joel's troubled past um, because he just bails, man. He just takes off and heads to the cabin where they're trying to go to stay for their weekend getaway. Um, And, and yeah, he doesn't want to be there in case if, you know, when the, I'll just say when the police arrive for whatever reason, um, he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be around because he's got issues. He doesn't want to be known. Um. So we'll fast forward a little bit. That way we don't trip up on spoiling the the moment there. Um, oh, man. <laughs> the most attractive character in this movie is coming up soon. Oh, she is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. So gorgeous. Are you talking about the hill lady? Or yes, ta- I am. <laughs> Haggis? Yes, I am. Okay, well, before we get yeah. there, before we get to Clark's, <laughs> before we get to Clark's love interest, apparently. Um, so, two funny quotes that I had, uh, and then we can get right to her. Um, okay, so he just came out of nowhere. Ed Ed wants to get to this lady Haggis. Um, he's heard stories of her. His, you know, from his childhood, he he knows the stories of Pumpkinhead. Everyone, this is a 
story you tell your kids to keep them in line, basically, right? That's you tell them about Pumpkinhead. There's a song about it. Um, I wish I would have wrote that down because that would be funny. Um, but anyways, harassing another kid about. Oh it. man, yeah, they were uh, okay. So they were really picking on their little brother, um, which I can relate to because I am the little brother in in my family, and uh, that is exactly what my older siblings would have done to me. Um, but that older sibling who's singing that song. Uh, actually takes Ed Hardy, but he's not going to take him the whole way because he's scared. So in the in the scene, when they actually get to that road on the hillside uh, or on the mountainside, um, you can actually see where they're coming from is very light. It's lit up. And where they're going is very dark and shadowy. And right where that light meets the darkness is where the kid's like, uh-uh, let me out of here. This is as far as I'll go. And I thought that was really cool. Like that kid does not want to go into that darkness, whatever it is. He doesn't necessarily know what's in there because no one goes in there. But from light to dark, he doesn't want to go through. So I thought that was really fun um, and right. a cool way to do it. And then um, so we get to meet. Now we get to meet Haggis. Um, and then she has she my favorite beautiful. quote. <laughs> She's gorgeous. Oh, God. She's oh, gorgeous. God. All she can do is take you straight to hell. That's what the pa said when he asked her where she was. He's like, yeah. where is she? All she can do is take you straight to hell. And let's be oh, real. She, she takes that hardy straight to hell. It's, um. <laughs> so she, she uh, when he says, God damn you, she says, he already has. He already has. Yeah. Uh, and then essentially, she, sends, she sends him to the, the graveyard pumpkin patch. And um, she tells him, you'll know where to dig. And he goes, but how will I know? And then she goes, you'll know, Ed Hardy. You'll know. And I'm like, oh, my God. No, seriously. How are we going to know? Because I, I really don't get it. Can we stop for a second and just talk about how much money this guy has? He's dropping, like, gold. And he's like, he's got, like, gold doubloons he's putting right in front of her. And he's like, this is all I have. And it's a bag of uh, silver dollars. Um, trivia those, note. Those are giant gold dollars trivia trivia note he he himself visited several pawn shops to find these silver dollars to use for haggis's scene and when he dropped them in that goblet you know how some of them kind of poured out onto the floor yeah apparently they went through the floorboards of that shack where they filmed and they still may be lying under that shack just fyi little uh little trivia note for those of you uh -huh. who are a little uh so, out of money so, or or if you want to go find something used in a film, Pumpkinhead, as like a memento type thing, um, they could still be there. Find out where it was filmed. But uh, what I love about that is Lance Henriksen poured everything he had into this film. Um, he he got his own set of dentures to make him look more rural. Um, he gathered all of his own props and wardrobe stuff, including a World War II pump gap, pump action shotgun uh, that he used in the film, like. To me, that just shows why Lance Henriksen was so good in this movie. Like he took this role one hundred percent serious. He did a good job. He definitely did. I I would say the witch may was may have hammed it up a little bit, but otherwise, uh, you know what? I I loved it when he pulled out the little uh, when he pulls the thing out of the pumpkin patch. You just see how grossed out he is, and it, it which you know it's it's he's 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 bringing out pumpkin head. Um, spoilers. Pumpkin, pumpkin head, kind of. He brings him, him back to the witch, and uh, pumpkin head comes. <laughs> um, that's one way to put it. Um, so, so the witch does her woobity woobity magic, um, yeah. and and uh, I get this while that's all kind of happening. The creepy creature creation kind of completes itself, right? Yeah, um, so and I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was a nice touch. They must have spent a lot of money on it because the initiation of Pumpkinhead it starts out as this really kind of alien esque looking doll, like an Ed Geiger's uh, alien or alien creation, and then yes. it just transforms into the standard Pumpkinhead. You see, like the transformation happen as a shadow, which is pretty good. It's 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 a it was good to watch. I enjoyed it. It was a nice effect. I thought it was awesome as well. Um... So then during that, they're cutting back to the kids. Um, and I just keep picturing in my head Cabin in the Woods, the movie. Um, right. Because, you know, there's there's a lot of these movies, uh, you know, Evil Dead, um, 
the Evil Dead original and the remake, um, Cabin in the Woods. Um, there's probably others I'm leaving out that I thought of the other night. But you get that, you know, teenagers hanging out in a cabin. But instead, we've got Joel being a complete a-hole. Um, yeah. You know, locking his friends in and beating people up. He's locked a few people in. He's he's adamant about, uh, you know, maintaining the situation. And from there, that's when the hunt begins. Uh, I wanted to talk about my favorite scene from one of my favorite uh, scenes is that there is a there are kills in this movie. Uh, pumpkin head on the tree where you can't you don't really see him, but you get a kind of an idea of how big he is. And he's holding something or someone like on this extremely tall tree. And that what suspension of belief that was absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, like I said, I mean, I had nightmares about this movie when I was a kid. There's every kill in this movie um, is, is in my opinion, good. Um, they're all very well done and thought out. And it isn't just like a, I strangled this guy, you know, and killed him. No, I mean, like Pumpkinhead does work in this movie. Um, you know, the men <laughs> or the men and women behind that, you know, animatron or if there's a guy in a suit. I don't even know. I haven't looked into any of it because it's a, it's a mix of a suit and. And That's there's awesome. got to be some puppetry in it as well. But, uh, yeah, no, he, he, uh, he likes to play with his food. Yeah, no, <laughs> he loves playing with his food. Um, let's see what's, so we get our first kill. We're not going to say names. We're just going to say the death happened. Um, if there's any of the kills Clark that you want to describe in detail, let me know. Um, just the tree, just the tree. Okay. Oh yeah, and th there is an impalement. He impales someone with a shotgun at one point. Mm -hmm. Um, so so Ed, you know, goes to Haggis and they unleash this um this beast, and um he goes home and decides to get drunk, while the dog looks at him like, remember the last time you got drunk, because he had that <laughs> bottle hidden up on a shelf, you know, kind of behind everything, and the yeah. dogs the dog Gypsy I think is the dog's name. Uh, is just sitting there, and she's like, "Dude, do you remember the last time you did this? Didn't end well." Um, fun fact about the dog: um, the dog's name is Mushroom, and it was in Grimsland, uh, Gremlins. So that was the dog in Gremlins. Yep, that's the same dog. Oh, so kudos, dog. kudos to Billy's dog making an arrival uh, in another film. I really like to see stuff like that. That's fun. Um, yeah. So uh, after that scene, cut away. Um, we're going to get, we get two deaths pretty, pretty back to back, um, second death and the third death come, um, any, anything in between there that you want to shout out real quick? No, no, just, uh, there's a, there's a scene with a dog bite that gives us a hint, uh, to something pretty important in the film. So if you're yeah. watching this movie for the for first time, uh, keep your eye out for that. Yeah. Um, and it's a good hint. Man, this this movie is really good. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, let's see. Oh, next best part of the movie when Pumpkinhead picks up the gun. I was like, hell yeah, get it, Pumpkinhead. Yeah. Uh, at, at some point between here and then, like Joel's like, I'm the one you want type uh, retribution, which was out of character for him. But I, I was really appreciative that he would say something like that. As much of a spoiler, that's not really a spoiler. He just nah. says it. And yeah. The kill with the the shotgun, like whoever he kills with the shotgun, is just it's mwah. It's worth it's it. Beautiful. Um, it's I gorgeous. I I feel like that um, that style of kill is is pretty neat. Um, because it shows how humanistic the pumpkin head character is as well. That that creature, it's yeah. way less of just like this nasty thing without a brain. Like it's smart. It knows what it's doing. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it definitely enjoys what it does. So that shotgun impalement is our fourth death um, so far. This is not including anything else, uh, by the way, not including the first 30 seconds of the movie um, or anything else like that. This is purely from Pumpkinhead's creation on I Counted Kills. Um, not to disrespect anything from the beginning of the film, but... Uh, right. that's just how I kept count. Um, cause when you text me, you're like, Hey, I've got a spoiler free note session. And I'm like, Oh, I should do the same thing. 
I'm going to put yeah. names in parentheses just in case we want to say them, <laughs> but oh, okay. I'll just count them. <laughs> um, yeah. So I love um, one of the characters gets to the motorcycle and he's like getting ready to rev up and get out of there. And then Pumpkinhead just walks up holding the bike chain. <laughs> I thought that was classic. Like, he's that's got pretty it right good. up in his hand. He just yeah. smiles. They're like, oh, God, are you serious? Um, that's, that was so good. And then after that, um, I don't have any spoiler-free notes. Everything after this is spoiler. So 100% spoilers. Yeah. Um, but, but I have to say, if you haven't seen Pumpkin Head, please, please, please watch it. Like This is a great uh, film for October and for Halloween. I really feel like it captures the, the time of the year, you know, fall um stuff like that i think it's really fun for this time of year Uh, yeah it's it's a good it's a good 80s horror film and my my opinion right now is there this movie does not need any sequel i have not seen the sequels i know they made them but uh yeah don't don't watch the sequels after you watch this one it might just leave a sour taste in your mouth my understanding is that they weren't very good yeah, I've oh. I've seen Pumpkinhead too, but it's been a very long time, and if I remember right, it's not worth it. Just to be fair, they probably changed the lore a bit. Uh, definitely go watch this movie. Try to understand the lore. I guess that's something we could talk about really briefly. Um, this is something that kind of pulled me into the movie a bit more. Uh, is there's there's this demon that you could potentially summon uh, if someone has done you wrong, and it will hurt anyone who tries to help you. Or anyone who gets uh, in, the, in, in the way, in the way, yeah, uh, in any way, shape, or form. And uh, apparently, uh, like throughout the film, you see the growth of this main character. I would say Ed Harley's probably the closest thing to a main character you have, aside from the heroine. Uh, he uh, definitely grows. Um, he shows different sides of. He shows many emotions and really want to give a shout out to whoever acted for him you said his name before but i don't i don't remember it but ed which harley. character ed hardly ed ed, uh, uh, so lance hendrickson lance hendrickson did a great job yeah hats off to you my man um yeah so quick ratings uh i would give this like a high rating for me seven out of ten personally um thought it was really good and i definitely can see myself watching this again next year cool nice all right, uh, we're gonna move on unless you want to give any other ratings or no. Cool. No, I'm. I think yeah. All righty. <laughs> so we're gonna move into what I call the fun movie of the week. Uh, Ernest Scared Stupid from 1991. It's got a 17 percent on Rotten Tomatoes and it has a 93 minute runtime. Um, this I is. I hate you for making me watch this. <laughs> this is such a kids movie, and that's how I remember it. Um. I'm not going to lie to you. Don't watch this movie, um, especially if you're above, I don't know, like 12. Don't watch this movie. Um, if you've hit your teens, please, please, please don't watch this movie. Unless you're into fun facts and trivia, because that's all I've got for you today. That's it. That's all I got. Fun facts and trivia, some quotes, um, some funny moments. So do you want to hear the synopsis? Because this is really, it's not even. Give me what you got. Ernest accidentally unleashes an ugly troll that plots to transform children into wooden dolls in the town of Briarville, Missouri. Why the hell did we even know that it was in Briarville, Missouri? It, they, it, uh, they show a couple signs, but it's not something you would no. really... No. Yeah. yeah. Um, this film is uh, one of the Ernest series films starring Jim Varney. Um, Disney really bought into him and made a ton of films. Um, starring Ernest, and I appreciate that because these were some of my favorite films as a kid growing up. Um, all right, let's get started with the beginning of the movie. So it's a really fun intro, a great song. Um, I thought it was hilarious, but it also has uh, a lot of horror and nostalgia in it. So all those black and white cuts of films, Clark, do you know that those are actual real horror films? I, my assumption was that was in the very beginning of the intro, right? Yeah. So I listed them the for you. one of the worst intros I've ever seen, by the <laughs> way. Uh, it's just Jim Varney hamming it up, and there being like a bunch of horror movies listed, like kind of shown, and then you see Jim Varney and a bunch of random spooky things here and there. All right, so I list, I've got them listed here for you. Do it. Let's, uh, let's hear them. 
Nosferatu from 1922, White Zombie from 1932, Phantom from Space 1953, The Brain from Planet Eros 1957, The Screaming Skull 1958, Missile to the Moon 1958, The Hideous Sun Demon 1958, The Giant Gila Monster 1959, The Killer Shrews 1959, Battle Beyond the Sun 1960, and my favorite and the only one I've seen out of all of these besides Nosferatu, the Little Shop of Horrors from 1960. It's the original, not the yep. classic remake uh, with uh, Rick Moranis, which is also a good a, film. It's not a bad movie to see if you want to watch something a little goofy that's black and white and, you know, kind of old. Yeah, very old. Um, it feels old. Um, that's a fun movie. It is. Uh, Anyhow. Uh, so that's they cut up a bunch of those movies and mashed them together with the classic Ernest song and that is the shitty intro that Clark got. Um, We cut to the story of Trontor, the troll that they're going to be attacked by, and uh, the little girl who's... (laughs) Trontor. The the girl who's telling the story, Elizabeth, she's being made fun of by Tom Tulip or Bobby Tulip, one of the twins or one of the brothers. Yeah, probably both both of them. Yep. And she, she shuts them down by saying, I read it in a book. That's the best comeback I've ever heard. Uh, we get a little a little further into the movie. I'm kind of rushing through this because I know Clark um, doesn't probably have a lot to say about oh, this movie. I got movie. tons to say. I'm just uh, keep going. Okay, so we get to the trash can scene uh, where Ernest has locked himself in the garbage can by accident, and you get a little hat tip here to Star Wars when they're in the trash compactor and they try to use the. <laughs> The metal to keep it open, um, and well, obviously, is that really a hat tip? Um, that's that's what I've got here in my notes. So that's what I'm going. Right. <laughs> I read it in a book. Uh, right. <laughs> then fast forward a little bit further. Um, we get the haunted house that they're trying to build, um, and then they get their butts kicked by the, the mean brothers, and they go and they build a treehouse. Which Completely in, unrelated from a haunted house, which makes no sense whatsoever, but but they do it anyway. But they do it anyways in a creepy, uh, fog-filled uh, open with one tree standing there alone, um, perfectly shaped for a treehouse. Um, and that inevitably uh, releases the troll. It releases well, Trontor. Ernest releases the troll because whoever it was, the, the old lady tells him how to do it. And she's like, you're going to release the troll. And he's, then he goes and he fucking does it because hey, he's an idiot. Spoiler alert, bro. Oh, man. Oh, no, <laughs> Ernest. <laughs> they say it at the very beginning of the movie, too. Like, so oh, heavily. they do. It's, yeah. it's hinted at very heavily and not if you, hinted at. Like, if you think this movie has spoilers, just uh, go ahead and fast forward to the end uh, and we'll get you there. There are no spoilers. This is just like he calls. You hear Trontor like twice, and from there on, it's like Booger Nose or whatever. Yep, Booger Lips. Um, Booger Lips. And the so... fact that he couldn't guess what the the magic ingredient to hurt him was was just beyond stupid. I guess they did that for the kids. Like yeah. this movie was made for people who are between the ages of four and eight. So you know it's a Disney movie, right? I do now. Yep. Um, John Cherry was the director and the writer. Um, and basically I looked at John Cherry and the only thing I think I've ever seen him work on is like a bunch of Ernest stuff and Hey Vern, it's Ernest TV series. Um, and then some unknown, not really cool stuff, uh, later on down in, in his career. So this guy's claim to fame. What's up? There was no Vern. Vern. Jim Varney. I know, but he's always talking to Vern. You know, Jim Barney's always talking to Vern, but there was no Vern. Sure. Hey, Vern. Hey, Vern. You know what I'm talking about? He's always, like, trying to sell something to Vern, and it's the camera's point of view and perspective. That was – this Vern, is the only Ernest movie without that character. Isn't Vern, like, the supposed to be, like, the viewer? Isn't that what they were trying to depict Pretty with much. that moment? Okay. Pretty I much. don't know. Hey, Vern, win $10,000. Um there's yeah, there's uh, that's all this guy's got. So it's a Disney film, that director and writer, um, and clearly they were marketing to like you said, uh, it's very small children, um, because anybody could figure out what M I blank K stands for. Um, Miak. Miak, obviously. So Joey gets grabbed, turned into wood. Um, I don't know. Oh man, I don't want to make the joke because it's bad. Um, 
So then we get cut. To, so Jim or uh, Jim, uh, Joey gets grabbed. He's gone. Uh, then we cut to Elizabeth and her mom is like, no, like, get your butt up. Get your ass downstairs in your costume. We're going to this party. I don't care how scared you are. No, I'm not going to look under your bed because nothing's there. You're a dumb kid. Well, in fact, there was nothing under her bed because he was laying on the bed next to her. Bam, she's dead. Okay, they move on. They were spooning. <laughs> they were spooning the whole time. It's just cuddling, man. Like, I don't know why she had to scream and ruin the moment. Blue leader, come in. Oh, God. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we cut to, uh, you know, uh, Ernest trying to catch the troll using all the cool shit that he bought at the store from Penn and Teller. I mean, uh, whoever they are. Those uh, two characters are in every single Ernest movie. Yes, and they They're remind me of a low-budget Penn and Teller. That's what they are. One guy talks. He's the salesman. One guy doesn't. He's just a sidekick. Um, except for talk. Penn and Teller are way better. No way. That guy does he talks. not. He what? talks. When? You hear him talk in the movie. He just You don't hear him very often. Okay. All right, I'll have to hold. I'll I'll trust you on that one. Um, so after <laughs> they're riding around trying to catch the troll, uh, you get this poor kid in a Native American costume who gets got, and he's done. Um, oh, <laughs> classic Halloween decorations throughout this whole film. Does that not take you back to the '90s? Come on. I mean, sure. The one thing that brought me back to the '90s is the kid on the skateboard. That was the driest joke you've ever delivered. <laughs> that wasn't even a joke. Like, I don't know which kid you're talking about. That's all the there's kids. There's a kid on a skateboard, and the troll just grabs him and turns him into a. He turns him into a wood wood statue right off kid the bat. The He's skateboard. the second kid he gets, first or second. Um, just a random kid on the skateboard. Troll grabs, and okay. back in the '90s, like everybody was all getting on skateboards and all the commercials wearing backwards hats, pink yellow all these weird stripes and colors everything was super radical and this kid was just he was just there on a skateboard just kind of like 1990s kid on a skateboard gets picked up by the troll fair enough that's what takes you back to the 90s i can dig it yeah i thought i was going to be a skateboarder in the 90s that didn't pan out well so to rewind a little bit and go back to the treehouse so those pizzas that they they fling out at the brothers um, were used props from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of I the Ooze, which I thought was kind of cool. The pizza launchers? Yeah. Well, the pizza the, the pizza itself. Oh. Those was were just... Was it real pizza? No. Nah. It was just pizza props? They probably threw sauce, I would guess, on the top and then flung them out there. That's what made all the mess. Man, that was just... You know, I was going to say, if they ordered those pizzas for this movie, I don't know how these kids afforded these pizzas in the first place, but if they... they, did they you know... You're wasting good food. Never do that. I mean, Wishbone would be super pissed right now if he was there. Uh, oh, yeah. He was in the movie. He was... Uh, <laughs> What's Ruck, the name of the Ruck dog? Shank or, <laughs> Shank or Shawshank Redemption. I don't remember. The dog? It was Ratchet. Is his name Ratchet? Something like that. I just kept thinking in my head, it's Wishbone, but um, I don't... He's not actually Wishbone, sadly. I did look that up. It is a different dog, sadly. I was really hoping it was Wishbone, because that's also a fun 90s memory that I have. Um, Ernest goes on to tell us, pretty soon we won't have to be worried about eating our Brussels sprouts. Soon they'll be eating us. And I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and then we get the scene where the troll is pulling the truck with a rope. Rimshot. Rimshot's the name of the dog. Thank you. That was going to bother me. Uh, till the end of this damn episode. Um, how about a bumper sandwich, Booger Lips? Oh, classic. Dude, Booger Lips, can we just talk about how, as the nerd in me is just like, how, what, how strong is Booger Lips? He's strong enough to pull a, dr a car driving all the way forward, but he's not strong enough to stop Ernest from dancing with him? I don't think at that point he wanted to because he was being embraced and the loving, caring man was giving him attention and that's all he really wanted at the end of the day clark and that's all wow. anyone wants and we're gonna get real deep here for a second and i'm gonna use my deep voice and i'm gonna talk to you heart to heart i want you to understand clark i too will give you a glass of miak anytime you want oh thank you i i will take that miak and i will put it on something i don't i don't know what miak is what good is a wooden dog i mean it can swim i guess oh man 
When, okay, so Ratchet gets turned into a statue, and that's the worst part in the film. It just breaks my heart. Honestly, Ratchet was the most likable character. <laughs> anytime a dog gets it in a horror film, I actually feel really bad. Because um, I, I think dog actors are some of the coolest. Or any dog uh, or animal actor, they're they're so awesome to watch, aren't they? Like the training it goes into, it's way harder to train an animal, yeah. I think, to do film sometimes than actual humans. We've got a ton of bad actors For out sure. there. But uh, pets that act, they're awesome. I love it. So like I'm gonna skip forward a bit. Do but it. There's there's a point where they get the troll gets all the five kids by midnight, and they're like his killer clowns from outer space come to terrorize the town, and they discover they all the kids realize that milk's their weakness, and they're all like throwing milk at him, and they're just uh-huh. dying. And Trontor or Booger Lips, he uh, he he says, "Demons make me super cool," and he just gets like these weird tentacles that that's, just kind of yeah that's all he gets he gets these weird was, penises growing out of his head oh god yeah and for a children's film i thought that that was really unnecessary disney i can't believe you did they, that they just made it gross like yeah very gross milk is he was too strong for milk like milk did not do his body wrong and ernest <laughs> ernest decides you know i i've never noticed how attractive you are toronto and he uh like I don't care what the movie says. Like Ernest is just he's into Toronto, and he grabs him and he starts dancing with him. And he's like, "Senpai, let me give you a kiss," <laughs> and that saves the day. And he gives him the biggest, sloppiest wet kiss I've ever seen. Oh God, yeah. What was the uh, what was the snot made of? Was that uh, like I don't know what they do to make that consistency. Was it like syrup? So back then you had, um, remember the goo stuff from like guts? Yeah. So I, I picture it to be like something like that mixed with like a syrupy kind of creation um, and makes it that nasty uh, moment. I don't know. That's what I guess. It's not like substance. Yeah. Um, so back to your comment though about the killer clowns from outer space. It legitimately is the killer clowns from outer space repainted because the Chiodo brothers are credited with the special effects for the film, and they're the ones who actually did the Killer Clowns for the 88 film, uh, Killer Clowns. So these actually are the Killer Clowns. No, I um, can tell. Yeah, and I thought that that was actually quite fun because I grew up watching Ernest Scared Stupid, never have even known Killer Clowns existed, and then when I got older, I was like, oh my God, now I know where they're from. This all makes sense. They crash-landed in 88, and then they came back as trolls to attack everybody in 91. <laughs> uh what else the, i the got killer here? clowns actually looked a lot more realistic to be fair oh totally the trolls the repainted trolls look terrible um yeah. there were actually 17 different trolls appear appearing in this movie um did you notice when the when the killer trolls when uh killer trolls now they're the killer trolls from briarville missouri or whatever um when they got killed they turned into that weird bloody uh yep. gory mess so there's yep. a there's two of them attacking a little girl in a car and he zaps right. that kid zaps both of them that car is now in my opinion completely wrecked because if it's nope. got that nasty dead body inside of it no one's gonna want that car that poor wow. car i just you know what it's an earnest movie i also want you to know a little bit of high ground never hurt anyone and he never knew when to quit and that's really all I got for this movie. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Jim Varney hams it up 2.0. If you want to see a movie where Jim Varney does whatever he wants, this is the film. Yeah, for a guy who was just a TV salesman like the Sham Wow guy to get picked up and put into his own film series like this is amazing. That means anybody yeah. can do it. He also got well, to, to voice be fair, Go ahead. Ernest joins the army was a pretty damn good film. Ernest goes to camp is a pretty decent film. Uh, they started jumping the shark with Ernest Goes to Jail, and I think they just had a limited budget with Ernest Scared Stupid. Yeah, that end, I think they're trying to gear it. Like you said, though, they're gearing it towards kids, for sure. Yeah. Um, even with a limited budget, it's, it's a great kids film. Like, my daughter is scared of this movie. She will not watch it with me. Um, but she loves Hocus Pocus, which is that same Disney Halloween-themed family film. So... Very funny that she'll watch Hocus Pocus with a bunch of witches who want to eat children, but not trolls where they're literally scared of milk. Yeah, they look scary. 
Yeah. Um, so Ernest, uh, Jim Varney went on to do, uh, the voice of, um, what's the dog slink and toy story and toy story two, uh, which is kind of cool. Those are, I think his, um, like maybe biggest claim to fame besides his own personal series. Um, I couldn't really find anything else in his IMDb that was like super cool or good. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of, kind of neat. Um, scrolling through his IMDb, he does have a lot of appearances, um, and different things. Like he was on Roseanne for a couple of episodes, which was a popular 90s show. Um, what else was the other one I liked? Oh, three ninjas high noon at mega mountain. He was in that, which I thought (laughs) was kind of funny. Um, yeah. And then he did Atlantis, the lost empire, the car, uh, the cartoon film. Um, but yeah. That's Ernest Scared Stupid. Um, I would give that a, a very low, low rating on my scale of like two out of ten. Um, not because I didn't have fun watching it, but because it's just not a very good horror film by itself. It's, um, it's, it's not a horror film. Not a horror film. Nope. It's a um, kid's movie. But I made you watch it anyways because remember, heart to heart, I will always give you a glass of Miak. Right. All right, everybody. My Miak. Make sure you follow us on social media. Please, please, please follow us. Um, it is Two Guys Horror Pod. Um, it's the number two guys horror pod on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and if you have any recommendations, like if you want to hear us, um, read your email. Um, shoot us an email at two guys and some horror at gmail.com. It's spelled out T W O. Um, like I said, Twitter and uh, Instagram just can't handle more characters. So uh, we had to shorten it there. But. Um, this episode will be going up this Saturday, October, uh, what is that? 12th, October 12th. Um, it's technically our first October episode for Halloween and the next two films, um, that we're going to be having coming up for October is house of a thousand corpses and the mine. I've never seen the mine. Um, I love house of a thousand corpses. I think it's a great Rob zombie film. Um, and I know Clark hadn't seen either of them when he picked these. So look forward to that episode. It should be pretty good. Uh, yeah, the mine, uh, I have no idea. I just know it's going to be bad. Both these movies take place on Halloween. So hopefully that, uh, you guys enjoy it. I don't know if I will, but we'll find out. And thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. I mean, Wishbone would be super pissed right now if he was there. Uh, oh, yeah. He was in the movie. He was... Uh, <laughs> What's Rock, the name of the Rock dog? Shank or <laughs> Hookshank or Shawshank Redemption. I don't remember. <laughs>